Welcome back to 1888, well to Spitalfields in fact and to where Dorset Street, once dubbed the worst street in London, would once have stood, but sadly no more. It would have been parallel to this road here, White's Road, pretty much where the edge of that new modern building is currently still being constructed. And this is where the Ripper story brings us next. It's been six weeks since the murders of Elizabeth Stride and Catherine Eddowes and people perhaps were beginning to think the streets were safe again. There's talk that women who had stopped going out by their own are, on their own are now letting their guard down, getting back to normal. It was too soon. At 1am on the 9th of November, a neighbour saw Mary Jane Kelly, a rather mysterious woman, we know very little about her, apparently Irish, brought up in Wales, apparently around 25 at the time of her death, by far the youngest of these women, but she was seen by a neighbour walking down Dorset Street around 1am in the company of a blotchy-faced man carrying a pail of beer. A neighbour watched as they made their way through the passageway that led to Mary's lodgings, number 13 Miller's Court, a small room, uh, furnished room rented for four shillings and sixpence a week that she had shared with her boyfriend Joe Barnett, boyfriend and sometime ripper suspect, until their final fight shortly before the murder. She was walking down, walked into the passageway with the blotchy faced man. Three, uh, around 3 a.m. the neighbour also said she heard a singing loudly in her room. Apparently Mary was prone to do this when she'd had a few drinks. And she also said she'd heard a lot of men coming in and out of the court. Mary was not the only person in Miller's Court, it has to be said, who was known to be supporting themselves through casual prostitution. I have my own suspicions about the landlord of the property, but that's another story. But more importantly, at 4am, another neighbour who lived above Mary uh, in Miller's Court heard a loud, was woken when her cat jumped on her chest. I want to start looking because that was really noisy. That's all right, just keep yeah. going. Cool. She was woken when her cat jumped on her chest as if startled by a loud noise. She also heard a cry of, oh, murder from the court, but apparently this was a common curse to hear at the time, so she didn't think much of it. In fact, this was probably the moment that Mary Kelly was attacked. Now, whether by luck or design, this was the only one of the Ripper's murders to be committed indoors, and so he had a lot more time with the body once she was dead, and he made terrible use of it. That day, the police, who usually only photograph murder victims in the mortuary for identification purposes, did something quite revolutionary. They sent for a local photographer to take some photographs inside and outside of the room. They realised that no mortuary photographs were going to do justice to the scene in that room. The scene was discovered the next morning by the assistant of the landlord of Miller's Court, John McCarthy. He sent his assistant, Thomas Bowie, around. He knocked on the wind door, asking Mary for the rent she owed. When he, she didn't answer, he pulled the curtain away from a broken window and peered in, expecting to see her hiding, waiting for him to leave. Instead, he saw the body of Mary, almost entirely naked, laid out on the bed. Her abdomen emptied, her heart missing, would never be found. One arm posed inside the cavity. Her face destroyed and the flesh ripped from her arms and legs. This, along with most of her organs, say, except for her heart and also her two breasts. These were All of this viscera was either placed around her in the bed or piled up on the bedside table. The same Mary mysterious woman, apparently by far the youngest of these women. Joe Barnett told us that she was uh, an Irish woman who had grown up in Wales, been introduced to prostitution by a cousin in Cardiff. She also told him she'd worked in an upmarket West End brothel before ending up in Whitechapel, but we will never know. The next bit of the story, let's just end with a nice little uh, extra titbit concerning the next night, the 10th of November, and a woman called Mrs Palmier who was selling roast chestnuts on a nearby street when she was said she was approached by a man. I suppose you've heard about the terrible murders last night, the man asked. Yes, said Mrs Palmier. The man, you can imagine him leaning in closer and lowering his voice, if you wish. The man replied, I know more about it than you do, and ran off into the 